hello and welcome to the show. I'm here showing off some multiplayer from Forza 6. Over the last few days, Turn 10 have been hosting some guided multiplayer sessions and I was fortunate to be able to take part in some of them. Uh, so I, I saved some replays and uh, got together some, uh, some highlights. You may wonder why are we starting here with a Volvo V8 supercar? Well, the very first race that I took part in was a race around Bathurst with the V8 supercars. Now, there was the uh, typical first quarter chaos uh, in this particular race that I got involved in got promptly dumped to the back of the field. Well, that wouldn't do. Not with my favourite cars at one of my favourite tracks, so it started a, uh, a recovery drive for me. First of all, going around the outside of a Ford, then finding myself trying to get to the inside of a Nissan at one of the fastest corners on the track. I was pretty committed. Well, you've got two wheels on the grass trying to get to the inside there. Yeah, you, you're, you're pretty damn committed to trying to, uh, to get that past out done there. Tough place to get. I managed to sort of outdrive the Nissan uh, up towards the skyline and then sort of all the way down the down the hill. The Fords ahead bump into one another. I get away with it, uh, <laughs> trying to just kind of dodge the uh, dodge the cars. This was the first time I had driven the V8 supercars at Bathurst in Forza 6. This one, as I get a really really big slide. I've driven the Volvo a little bit uh, around some different circuits. Hadn't tackled Bathurst yet, and this is such an incredible challenge. For, uh, for this kind of car. It wasn't long before I was on to my next victim, another one of the Falcons. Got myself to the inside as we run down towards the uh, the final corner. Uh, managed to just kind of keep it around there. Going around the outside of that final turn is a really difficult thing to do. The Ford just ran out of grip. No contact in that one. The Ford just couldn't get it stopped and turned in time and uh, I could get my vehicle past. I was the only one driving a Volvo, which was a uh, slight disappointment. I was expecting to see more Volvos. In, uh, in here, but uh, yeah, I, I really like the car, and as I said, I love the challenge. Like the first part of the uh, the lap here at Bathurst, where well, like, sort of the first turns or right angle fell by really long straight, and then you come to uh, really nasty sections, incredibly narrow, of course, with the walls so close. The Mercedes up ahead braked very early. As I said before about fours or six, it's um, getting the braking point right is really difficult. It's so easy to keep braking far, far too early. Uh, the Mercedes was very slow on the way in. I could just carry the speed through the turn and would simply out drag him uh, on the way up here and then you've got to navigate in between the walls in this case of dare you be flat out or not uh, around here if you get things right you can just about do it but it's always sort of on the limit as I go right up against the wall in this next section is is fantastic as well because again you're just on the limit of what the other uh, cars can do and you can tell when I'm pushing a car quite hard when it sort of starts quartering like this when, when I'm starting to <laughs> Yeah, getting sort of a little bit sideways. That's that's when I'm really damn pushing the, the things. And it also was helped a little bit by slightly clobbering the curve on the inside. I was kind of now competing. Was, I wanted to get on the podium. I was in fourth at this stage. I could see second and third ahead of me. The leader was quite a long way gone uh, by this point. As, uh, yeah, I was again pushing it just that little bit too hard coming down the hill, getting the Volvo uh, quite sideways, to be honest. I was going to say ever so slightly sideways. It, it was quite sideways going down there. I managed to gather it all up. Somebody had found the tyre bundle and was uh, making a mess of the track. Yeah, the tyres do kind of spew across the track uh, if you bump into them. I was catching the cars ahead at this stage, but I had two opportunities left. The chase, well, I'm not close enough. It's a, it's a scary place to go side by side because it is completely flat out, but I'm far too far back from the Ford to be doing anything. I maybe pick up a little bit of a slipstream down here, but I'm too far back. This chicane is the next a good overtaking spot down here, but again, too far back. The Ford ahead of me, though, gets a bit of a slide on, and now I see my opportunity to try and get past it. But I thought about coming back to the inside. Changed my mind. Didn't fancy being on the outside for the final term. Very similar move to the one I pulled a lap earlier. Getting up the inside into the last quarter, and again, another car just couldn't hold it around the outside. I think he may have put a wheel on the grass, got it very, very sideways, and the Volvo managed to I managed to get it up to uh, to third place. Another lap probably could have could have potentially got to second. I uh, was was catching the leader uh, as well. Volvo was lovely, really, really nice car to drive around Bathurst. The next race that we went to was uh, Brantash Indy in the pouring rain with some touring cars. Now, not only are there the world touring cars, the British touring cars, also the uh, the Scandinavian touring cars were here. So to kind of give my, my Civic a little bit of a chance, this is a modified one, had some 500 horsepower in an attempt to keep up with the other cars. Of course, in the rain off the start line, it was mullered, 
front wheel drive at a wet track, not a good place to start. You saw the BMWs and the Volvos come flying past. The leaders kind of all tangled around turn two. I tried to get my way through on the inside. I survived it. A Volvo got in the big puddle and just slides his whole way down the hill. There's a good job of uh, keeping that one from spinning out. The Audi in front of me goes a little bit wide. I see my opportunity to take third place away from him and uh, promptly get the Civic past the two leaders as the Audi outbreaks himself. Again, the Audi does a good job of keeping it on the road. Two leaders were fighting. I spotted a gap, and sure enough, <laughs> when there's a Civic-sized gap that I can go for, I'm going to be putting my car there. I don't think the Volvo expected me to be close enough to do anything there. Just left the door a bit open, so uh, yeah, I've <laughs> fired the Civic up the inside, someone in the background's uh, off on the grass again, up towards turn one. Uh, I thought I'd braked quite early, it just turns out it, it was a decent braking point as the leader just can't quite hold it. The racing in the rain, especially when you're racing so closely with other people, it is so easy to make little mistakes. It only takes to tiny outbreak yourself when you're racing with other cars to get things horribly, horribly wrong, as we're about to see. As I come down the hill, I go across the puddle, get it slightly sideways, get the rear wheel on the dirt and the Civic. I so nearly lose the Civic. If I'd been in a rear-wheel drive car, I would have gone round. Being in a front-wheel drive car, I could boot it, and I saved it. I lost the position to the Volvo, but uh, by booting it and save it, yeah, it kept me in second. Thought about trying to do the same thing again this time around. I wasn't close enough to have a go at the Volvo. I didn't really need to bother, though, as the Volvo tried to put on the power coming out of this uh, this final corner and loses the rear end and goes round in a circle. In the rain, it is so much easier to uh, so put the car in front of you under pressure, and it only takes a little mistake. If you'd done that in the dry, the Volvo may have got a little bit sideways, and that would have been it. But uh, you do it in the pouring rain, especially if there's puddles involved, very easy to kind of clip them ever so slightly wrong, and that's going to put your car around. The front wheel drive Civic was pretty difficult to drive with all of this power. When we have, as I said, I think it was about 500 horsepower in this. When you have that much power, it is not an easy car to drive in the rain. You just get miles of understeer if you try and go on the power. Admittedly, the Volvos were struggling a lot more from the uh, the oversteer and so on. So, yeah, I mean, both cars have their have their difficulties. And yeah, the the rain is is a lovely challenge. Even at, at Brands Hatch Indy, let's face it, this is a pretty it's a pretty easy track to learn. I mean, no track is is an easy track to master, but Brands Hatch Indy is a pretty straightforward track. If you know for, for a track to, to learn to drive and so on. Even here, it was so easy to, to, to make little mistakes, and little mistakes in the wet become very, very big mistakes. So, yeah, it was it was a great challenge, uh, racing these cars around here. Unfortunately, for the rest of the race, pretty lonely one for uh, for me around uh, around here. There was another Civic. I think the Civic that, that was leading it for the first lap, I think he was setting very, very similar lap times, but of course had a really big off, uh, and dropped quite a long way back. Yeah, the uh, the wet is, is a glorious challenge for, uh, for multiplayer. Next event, we did some uh, some Evos versus Impressors. Again, I got tangled up at the start line and was having to work my way through the field. Somehow, I'm not quite sure how I pulled that maneuver off. This Evo, it's a C-Class car. It was one of the cars I bought it for a career race and it was, was auto-upgraded to C-Class. I don't know where on earth it got all the speed from out of that final corner. Really struggling with understeer uh, around here, but somehow I managed to get past two of the Impressors. Thought about going around the outside of another into turn one. They ended up running a little bit wide, so I cut back to the inside. A little bit of a scrape on the... Uh, <laughs> on the way past. Got the uh, got the position, though. Yeah, these... I was actually surprised just how much understeer I was getting from the uh, the Evo. Took a little bit of uh, getting used to around here. Really caught me out on the uh, on the opening lap. I get my... I just simply out-drag the Impreza down this back straight. And what I say about braking early, the Evo, Evo sorry, in front of me gets on the brakes. Locks his brakes slightly, but brakes very early. I sort of... It was, I wasn't intending on going for a dive there. I'll be honest, I didn't think I was close enough, and uh, the car ahead braked very, very early, and I sort of panicked and chucked my car up the inside. It was either that or end up in the back of him. And again, you see me struggling with understeer around that uh, that final turn, although not as much as someone in the background that bumps into the tyre wall. Um, yeah, that, that was one of those I really hoped them... And I, I thought I was going in the tyre wall. I, I will be honest, I thought I'd braked a little bit. I pushed it a little too hard, and of course, taking such a shallow line, trying to get past a car ahead of you, I thought that was ending badly. But you really can get away with quite a lot on the brakes. Of course, you know, you still got to brake at the right point. You still got to be aware of how good they are. You can't be silly with them. But, uh, yeah, you, it is surprising how late you can get on the brakes and, and still and still make a corner, you know, still make a dive. You see the, uh, the slight state of my car. <laughs> it had been in the wars a little bit. Again, tyres. I quite like the the, uh, the tyre bundle. Like, when you hit a tyre bundle, as a car in the background demonstrates at a good time, it, it does feel like a tyre bundle. It's kind of that... 
kind of that little, little movement. Tire bundle kind of moves around and spews tires about. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really, really quite cool. Our next race, we went to Monza with some hypercars. Hadn't driven Monza. I tend not to particularly like driving racing hypercars. Yeah, for me, the, the best sort of racing is with low-class cars. I mean, when we race D-class, C-class cars, that's when we get some fantastic racing. Going up to hypercars, you tend not to get as good at racing. I tend not to drive them very much and I hadn't driven Monza on, uh, on 4 to 6 yet, so again, it was a learning experience for me with a completely new car and a completely new track. I, I do know the Monza circuit, played it on the Formula 1 games and so on, but uh, yeah, this was uh, was all completely uh, completely new to me. Other cars were struggling, La Ferrari gets things very wrong, I can simply out-drag a Pagani, that uh, also, I suspect, had uh, had a little bit of an off, and I was again, again I got involved in a start line shunt and was, uh, was working my way through the pack, caught up to the back of a McLaren that uh, got a very big slide on the way into uh, the Parabolica. The McLaren, I don't know quite what upgrades it had on it. I was driving a, a rented LaFerrari, I think. Uh, the McLaren, I can tell it's not standard because it has a huge wing on the back of it. The huge wing may give it downforce for the corners, but uh, I've got more straight line speed with the Ferrari as we come down the uh, start finish straight towards turn one. I am stuck on the outside, not really where you want to be. Very tough to get around the outside of these chicanes. If I could have kept it, of course, it will put you on the inside for the next part, but uh, no, I, I couldn't do it. I didn't try quite trust myself, sorry, with the car. Towards the next turn, I thought I had a really good run. I thought about going around the outside of the McLaren, saw two cars ahead have a big off, and I probably changed my mind, especially when the car started sliding a little bit. Figured, nah, it, it's not worth it. Again, I was thinking, looking, seeing if I could have a go at the chicane, just in case he braked a little bit early. He didn't. Got the brakes really well down there. However, LaFerrari up ahead had an off, and that compromised the McLaren. Well, if you leave me a gap like that, I am uh, <laughs> I'm going to take it. I shall make the most. Of, uh, of some Ferrari teamwork there going on. He probably gets out of my way. Uh, understeering off into the gravel. I then get a big slide. I'm not sure if I didn't put a wheel. I certainly put a wheel on the AstroTurf. Not sure if I didn't put a wheel sort of on the grass. That got me very, very sideways. Now the McLaren is fighting back on the inside. Having a look, trying to see if he can get past, but he doesn't have the speed of the uh, of the Ferrari to come down towards this Scari. I had no idea where to break. I guessed I, I broke too early. Better than breaking too late, admittedly. But uh, that gave the McLaren a relatively straightforward pass. I wasn't giving up, though, fighting it side by side through the rest of the corner. Uh, I wasn't sure if I was going to get space or not. I kind of jumped the curb. I think he gave me plenty of space. He ended up running wide, put a wheel on the sand, was slow off the corner. So I got the position back. And of all the races I'd take a part in, despite not really fancying hypercars at Monza, this one was proving to be the best. Paragolica again going too wide. Might have worked for McLaren. He stuck a wheel on the grass though, slowed himself down quite a lot, made sure there was plenty of space on the inside if he was uh, if he was still there. Yeah, if, if he hadn't put a wheel on the grass, might have, might have got it done. Uh, around that uh, around that corner, but now I had just a nice little safety margin back to uh, the P1. I was again a little bit cautious under brakes. I just didn't want to make it with cars like these that are so fast. I mean, you're doing like 190, 200 miles an hour down these straights. If you break a fraction too late, you are going very, very quickly into uh, the chicane. So I was being a little bit cautious with the car and track that I barely knew uh, to this stage. I then got things wrong. I, I just got the car ever so slightly sideways. Just pushed my luck a little bit too much. I'm I'm still not sure how I saved that and how I didn't have a monumental accident around there. It gave the McLaren a chance to get up alongside, but it stuck him on the outside for the uh, the chicane, and he couldn't quite do it. Yeah, when when the car sort of started going on me there, I thought I was done for somehow managing to uh, <laughs> wrestle control uh, with the Ferrari this time, despite running again a little bit wide. I was having a, a tendency of just dropping the rear wheel ever so slightly on the grass, and that was causing the uh, the, the little bit of issues that, uh, that you're seeing around here. Now, this time I came up towards Ascari, I knew what I was doing. I, at least I hoped I knew what I was doing. I was going defensive, uh, and I thought I got the braking better. It was still a little bit early, certainly could have pushed the car more through there. The McLaren wasn't any better, and he was stuck on the outside. Fortunately, things would go a little bit wrong for me. As we came out, out, of the, out of the chicane there, I was busy looking behind me to see where the McLaren was. Didn't notice someone had thrown billboards across the road. I hit one, and uh, that, that's kind of fired my car to the left. I got it. I got it back under control again. Got it back on track. I scraped the uh, the guardrail, but uh, yeah, a little bit disappointing on that. After such a fantastic battle, I was screwed over by a billboard. Um, yeah, that's a uh, little bit unfortunate. But there we go. Uh, the McLaren would take. This was over second and third uh, for, uh, for for this particular race. We were lapping a lot quicker than the leader, but we just ran out of laps to do anything about him. Um, yeah, it was an incredible battle. Very very good fun with these two cars. Didn't expect there to be a great battle in this one particularly. 
as I said, not a fan of hypercar. Well, I like hypercars, just racing them never tends to end particularly well. But yeah, that was a really very, very good fun, fun race. And the final, the final race for this video, we took some Formula E's around the Rio street circuit. I started, I was doing fairly well with starting positions. This time I was towards the front of the field. We had, I think we had 24 players in the lobby at, uh, at this time. So yeah, getting towards the front of the field or starting towards the front of the field was quite useful. I made up a bunch of positions through these first few corners. I just went flat out and uh, managed to navigate all of the chaos as cars slipped and slided their way around. Uh, this, I was up to fourth at this stage and uh, getting a better run uh, around this sort of turn. I'm not even sure we call it turn two, turn three. I think I could just out drag the other car as we ran up the hill towards the uh, towards the tunnel. Now there is a funny sound going on in the tunnel. You'll hear it like a clanking sound. It's uh, it's not the cars being funny. There's like these metal grates that uh, that go across the road. So when you hit them, yeah, it makes a big clanking. It actually sounds a lot louder in the replays than it does when you're when you're driving it. So that's what the, it took me a while to figure out what that funny noise was when I <laughs> when I first played this. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's what the uh, the sound was coming from. Now the Formula E cars, I will be honest, when I didn't like. Them. Them. I didn't like them at all in Forza 5, were certainly not my uh, my favourite of vehicles. They suit my driving style a little bit better in this one, I'm still not a huge fan of them. The problem is sort of sudden oversteer. On the most part you will drive it and it'll be very very good. It'll be, you know, an open wheeled race car and then you see through here. The car in second, you saw him slide, I, sl I slid quite a lot more through that corner. I may have gave, given the tyre bundle on the outside uh, a bit of a scare through there. They are, I find them a really tough car to drive. They are better, certainly, this time around. There's less sudden oversteer than there was before, but uh, yeah, it's so easy to uh, to get caught out. The track had kind of been cleared of tyre bundles, so I went a, a bit aggressive. We got a slightly flying Formula E at, uh, <laughs> at one point. Got a surprising amount of airtime uh, over there. Also, thank you to the guys who, uh, some, some cars got broken uh, early on and we're having to kind of limp around back to the pits. Well done for them to, to getting out of the way. They did a very good job, all of the, uh, the busted cars, for keeping out of the way of the rest of the guys racing, which which we always like to see. Yeah, I was, I was sort of gradually closing and closing the back of second place. It's never a good sign uh, when you can hear the, well, it's like the, like the stream is not quite fireworks, but then things firing off over the sound of the uh, cars. Formula E's are... Uh, another, aside from the, the random oversteer moments, as you see, I kind of get it through this long sweeping turn one. Um, yeah, aside from the random oversteering moments, the other difficulty is actually hearing when to change gear. They do have proper gearboxes, and uh, it's very easy to have it buzzing in the limiter and you just not realise because you're so used to normal engine noise. Unfortunately, there wasn't really to be an epic battle. In, uh, in this particular race, the car ahead of me just pushed it too much on the uh, on the brakes which would allow me to get a uh, relatively simple just drive around the corner and say a simple overtake yeah just get around the corner without crashing into anything would uh, would get me past uh, yeah these these take a bit of a bit of getting used to and the rio circuit itself can also take a bit of getting used to as well there's very little in the way of kind of braking there are some braking boards around but there aren't for other corners and if you don't know the track particularly well it's very easy to try and get carried away because these cars are pretty pretty damn good on the brakes again we see the sudden oversteer as we came down the hill slightly laggy replay on that bit but uh, yeah, the sudden snap of oversteer. I got away. I bounced off a wall ever so slightly. Again, further down, there's a big, a big slide from the car. Not my favourite of the vehicles, but um, yeah, I, I fared a little bit better with them. And for the rest of that race, there's nothing particularly exciting happened. But yeah, the multiplayer was uh, was very good fun. It was pretty damn stable as well for having all 24 people uh, in the in the lobby. And uh, yeah, had some had some good racing, especially with the uh, hypercars. Really didn't expect that one to go as well as it did. That was bloody good. Fun. And of course, V8 supercars at Bathurst, getting plenty of overtakes with the uh, with the Volvo was also uh, very very enjoyable. Anyway, that is it for this uh, video, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.